Okay, Al. So, um, the two devices that we're looking at in here are a Garmin 340 audio panel and a Garmin 430 GPS comm and nav device. So let's talk first about the audio panel because that's kind of like the switch panel in here and we really should get it working the first thing. So um, it turns on by turning on this knob here and as you can see when that does on you get some lights to tell you that it's working and you can see the lights here on COM1 are on. So what the audio panel does is essentially it allows us two things. One is it's established the communications between you and I. So that's an, it's an intercom in that sense, or you and I, and if there's other people as well. And it also allows you to connect to the radios. So we have two radios here. We've got COM1 and COM2. So you can see you can select COM1 or COM2. Right now we're on COM1. Volume, your volume for the intercom is on this side. So that's this button here and you can adjust it. This is my volume on this side in here. There's also a squelch on your side and a squelch on my side, which is kind of nice because that means the you can adjust whether you can blank out the, the white noise, the, the, the static noise in the system. And uh, speaking of static noise, we've got a little bit of rain coming down here. I wonder how that's going to work out. And uh, on my side, I can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So any questions about this so far? No, that's good. Okay, good. So let's look at the uh, the GPS Garmin 430 now. So we can turn it on with that knob. Why don't you turn it and then maybe just turn it to halfway. So a little dot should go right up at the top there. That's just a habit I like to do. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So that's our that's how we turn it on. That's how we adjust the volume for the radio, how loud we're going to hear mm -hmm. it. You can see it goes through its self-test and it'll come up shortly with a screen that tells you whether its database is up to date for the GPS portion. Yep. Right in there, so self-test and all that. Um, in a second, when that comes up, we'll acknowledge it and, and all that. So there it goes. It tells us that our database expires 18th of October. Today is the 10th of October, so we're good. So we're going to press the OK button. Now, this screen here allows us to see how the GPS is communicating with and, and with the uh, CDI, the course deviation indicator, and half left, half up. These are our different needles. And I'm not going to go into this anymore, but it's just a way of checking to make sure that it, it works properly. So again, this is OK. So again, press OK and, and it comes up, telling us now what GPS the GPS is seeing in terms of satellites. And it's going to come back in a, in a moment with a, um, with a map. Now, should so, I adjust the... Um squelch at the beginning or should I wait? We'll get that and we'll get to that in a second here. Let's just talk about this here. So COM is our frequencies. Like in our radio, remember radio you've always got an active frequency and a standby frequency. Uh, the volume here is going to adjust how you're going to hear this. Now you're right, uh, there is a squelch in here that allows you to see, to hear what you're going to hear in terms of noise. So now it normally comes on with the squelch active. Yeah. If you press the button, now you'll see there's an RX that comes right. up. And that's really is telling you now that you should be hearing some noise, the random noise that's coming in through the ether if you want. And that's a, it's a way of allowing you to adjust the volume that you're going to be hearing with that. It's now, just something sound. Yeah, exactly. I just want to see if we can hear this. There we go. You can actually hear it on, that's correct. on the loudspeaker. There, so that's another feature in here. You can actually direct the sound to the speakers if people right. don't have a, a headset. So now we would change, if we wanted to change the frequencies, for instance, let's dial 123.35 using these buttons in here for the practice area. Yeah, so the big button dials the, the numeric frequencies and the small one dials the decimal, 123.35. And if I want to switch it over, so just hand by, hold on, before we do that, let's disable the squelch so we don't get, this, get rid of this noise. Perfect. See, so now the noise goes away. So now we can switch over to practice area frequency. Well, there's nobody flying today with this weather, so probably not an issue. So, um, so let's not worry about that anymore. So now let's look a little bit at the VOR side of this. So in the same way, the VOR has two frequencies, a standby and a, sorry, a standby and an active frequency. As it turns out, you've got the frequency for the Ottawa VOR in here. So that's good. Now, if I wanted to change that, if you'd need to press this button to highlight the frequency down here. Right, exactly. Now you can change that one to something else if you wanted to, but for the moment we'll leave it that way 
and to make it active, what would we do? Exactly. Just change it that way. Perfect. And that is the ILS uh, frequency for runway 32. No kidding. Absolutely right. Yeah, exactly. So now if I want to verify that this one is correctly operating, what do I need to do? I need to listen to its Morse code. Yeah. So first thing I'm going to check on nav one. So now I hear some noise. Yes. But I'm not hearing any signal. So here, you see, down here it says push for ident. So let's try that. You get the ID. You get signal. the ID that tells you you've switched it properly. And in the background here, you can hear the Morse code. It's pretty, for some it's reason, sane. It, it switched over to 114.6. Oh, I think you did that before. I think you did that. Yeah, that's that the ILS frequency? That's the ILS, yeah. Well, we won't hear the ILS. Okay. Can you hear it? In the can background, can it's I pretty Can I turn deep. the volume up a bit? Sure. Pretty loud. Okay, that's enough. We don't want to hear that anymore. That's too noisy. Too noisy. So now you can switch it off, or as you said earlier, when we were talking about this, you can leave it in the ID ident mode. So later on, if you want to use it, all you'd need to do with another frequency, all you'd need to do is hit nav one, yeah. and it would switch right yeah. on. So that's the VOR side. Right. Now. Of course, the other thing we'd want to do with the VOR side would be to make sure that it's communicating properly and that we are actually on the right uh, on the right heading, or that the the, the uh, actually the VOR is, is detecting properly. So VOR localizer, this is telling us the CDI is actually connected to the um, to the CDI, local. and except your indicator doesn't seem to be. If I turn that over here. It's centered, but we don't have a flag here. So there seems to be maybe something something not happening here that I would expect to be happening. So we should have a flag going off saying that it is actually receiving the signal in here or that this device is receiving it. And I'm not sure why it's not doing that. So anyway, so that's, yeah, uh, GPS. And it does confirm here, um, you can see it on the, on the CDI, this NDOR localizer but it doesn't seem to be getting any any signal. Ah, well, there we go. So I guess we wouldn't want to go fly IFR with that. No. Okay, so we've talked about the COM frequencies, we've talked about the VOR localizer frequencies, um, and they should be working. Now let's talk about a bit more about the other buttons here. So if I wanted to listen to one frequency and talk to terminal, for instance, on one frequency, but also listen on a second frequency, what I could do is set the second frequency on the second radio and then select COM2. So now I would be able to listen to COM1, listen to COM2, and speak on COM1. Yeah. Pretty simple. Now if I wanted to switch to talk to somebody on COM2, all I'd need to do is click, and now I'm speaking on COM2. But right. I'm still listening to both of the others. Well, not really anymore. but. I can listen to COM1 as well and...